Hi, Andrew here, and it's Thursday night again, and I'm sitting in the car again, outside the kids' piano lessons again. I've been hoping to lighten up a little bit around these here parts, especially after the last video. If you saw that one, any discomfort you felt seeing it, trust me, I felt a great deal more making it. It excavated a lot of raw, painful emotion. And I want to lighten the mood a little bit, and I'm going to try. I've been keeping an eye on the scene, uh, an eye on the passing scene, and there have been things that, uh, that are there to help lighten the mood. I saw a supercut of various talking heads around the world basically laughing at Prime Minister Blackface. Um, he's now being openly mocked around the world, which <laughs> you want to say, you know, part of me, my gut says, it, which is a good thing. It's not. It's a bad thing when the leader of a G7 nation is the butt of jokes around the world. He's a punchline. And we're stuck with them. Having said that, some of it was pretty darn funny. But there's been great amusement. I don't know if you followed the Joe Rogan saga. Joe Rogan, the most popular podcaster in the world, is in trouble for something he said 10 or 12 or whatever years ago. People he, who did the exact same thing, whom he came out and defended are yabbing him. You know, from Abbott and Costello, hey, yeah, but, yeah, but. Which it all basically comes down to, it was okay when I did it, but it's not okay when he does it because reasons. And and it, it it's an interesting saga. Uh, it's an amusing saga. Having CNN, having a, a, a news anchor on CNN, I think it was uh, Camerata, say, I don't know what else to do about him. Um, you're a news program. Your job isn't to do something about a guy you don't like. Your job is to report the news. <laughs> Pretty funny stuff. The saga of the um, governor of uh, Georgia, uh, Abrams. Oh, wait, she's not the governor. She's just never admitted it. She's from the party that claims questioning the results of a uh, of an election is makes you a seditionist and insurrectionist. But she's never admitted that she lost the election. She's morbidly obese. What's the number one comorbidity to uh, COVID death? Obesity. She's morbidly obese, middle aged sitting in a room full of school children, and there's only one person in the room not wearing a mask. Guess who it was? It wasn't the kids. Spin, spin, spin. They put her into the water, to the rinse and spin cycle. And because of that, and because of the Canadian uh, freedom truckers protesting mandates all over, and because Biden in the Real Clear Politics uh, average of polls is now below 40% popularity. Suddenly the science on masking, which has been known for over a year, has changed. And school mask mandates are lifting. Or at least mask mandates are lifting. But the real goose steppers like Hochul in, in uh, New York and their fat flatworm fuckwit fascist prick Ford are never going to unmask the kids. The people who are least at risk, who get the least benefit from masks, are the people who are going to be the last to get their faces uncovered. The people who are taking the most damage. I'm trying to be funny here. I'm not happy. Then there's the uh, GoFundMe saga. If you remember, GoFundMe stole $10 million. When several American uh, governors said, you know... When you say you're a fundraising campaign and you accredit a campaign 
and you disperse some of the money to that campaign, and then the mayor of Ottawa and the chief of police and probably the Canadian prime minister give you a phone call and say, we don't want you to distribute that money. And then you say, yeah, you know what? We're just going to give it to our pet charities. That's wire fraud. At least under several interpretations, it's a wi it's wire fraud. And several of American governors said, yeah, that's wire fraud. We're going to investigate you. And suddenly GoFundMe decided, oh, oh we'll automatically return your payments. Another fundraising organization got involved. And the Freedom Trucker protest has a great big pile of money. And now fat fascist flatworm fuckwit Ford is trying to legally steal it. Didn't work with the GoFundMe. I don't see it working with this, but he's certainly letting his inner, his inner Adolf fly, isn't he? Go Adolf Ford. You can do it. No, you can't. I return to his comment about how much he loves being premier and how much he hates lockdowns. Not by his actions, he doesn't. I have talked to my children about these events. And I talk to them in a much calmer tone than I speak to you. And a much more neutral tone than I speak to you. And I give them, oh, I try to give them the, the facts just straight down the line. And my 11-year-old has the most incredible bullshit detector. I started, to, I told them what was happening with GoFundMe. That's stealing, Dad. Yeah. I told them Trudeau's comments, when uh, uh, initial comments about the convoy. And they both, my oldest and my middle boy, looked at me. That's just going to make them matter. Yeah. Trudeau is dumber than my 11-year-old. Try to be amused, folks. If you let it get to you, you end up like I was, like you saw me in yesterday's video. Don't let it eat you up. Don't let it get to you. I said it before. I'll say it again. Thank you, Mark Stein. Be happy, warriors. We can win this. We're in the mid game and it's get and and we've got an ugly stretch, but we can win this. Keep up the fight.